light or the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. So it said the tithe should be the increase of your seed that the field bring forth. Does 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 the does the field bring forth twenty dollars? Can I go get every week? Can I, can I go in my yard and pull $20 out of my yard? No, it's, it, the seed, the seed is actually, it's actually talking about real seed. It's not talking about money at all. It's talking about real seed. Now read on. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tide of the tide of thy corn, of thy wine, and thy oil. So now going into the tide, like you were saying earlier, you said year by year, you should bring the increase of your seed every year to the place where the Lord put his name. Are these churches going back to Jerusalem every year? And they're talking about collecting tithes every week. Where, where in the Bible does it say anything about a building fund? What about the uh, the pastor retirement fund? Bring it out. What about love? Let's read on. And the firstling of thy and the firstling of thy herds and of thy flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So this was under the Levitical priesthood, which this was the law of sacrifice that we had to tithe and bring the increase of the field. Because we have to bring wave offerings and heave offerings, the first of our crops. Those were offerings. And then we also had to bring the first of our, our uh, animals for offerings, for the sacrifice. Now, when Jesus Christ came, did he not end the, did he end the law of sacrifice? When he came, he became the ultimate sacrifice, right? So why are we still doing tithing? They call it sacrificial tithing. Let's, 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 go to, let's go to Hebrews 10 and let's, let's see about this sacrificial. Hebrews 10. Let's see what Jesus Christ said. And I, I know what you're back to church, but I'm not a member. Okay. I'm not a member anywhere right now because I have been, I have the revelation. Okay. I'll praise it. I don't, I, I don't, I'm Hebrew. not so faking. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the love having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually, make the comers thereof perfect. So they offer these sacrifices year by year. So he's talking about the same thing Tadden was talking about, year by year offerings, right? Let's see what Jesus Christ said. For then would they not have seeds to be offered, so if these offerings were, the, were stopping your sins, would they have ceased to be offered? Offered? They would have stopped if they were actually taking away sins. We would really have no need to sacrifice. But watch this. Because that the worshiper was purged shall have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So it's not possible that the, the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins like it says. So this is talking about animal sacrifice. Drop down to verse 8. But, verse 8. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offering, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein. Which are of, which are offered by the law. So God has no pleasure in animal sacrifice, which the law of tithing falls under animal sacrifice. So this, yeah, this is the new. Right. Everybody came over there. Everybody came over there. That's what they depend on your computer and not differentiate the different animals. Right. And now, how that's like. Hey, sis, whatever they're doing over there, let them do that over there because that's, that's, that's on them. You should be focused right here and right now because God is speaking to you. That's right. 
All right. Bring it out. So we're talking about not doing tithing anymore. Tithing fell under the law of sacrifice to the Levitical priesthood. If you ask these pastors, do they know if they're from the tribe of Levi? Most of them are going to say no, they don't know if they're from the tribe of Levi. So sacrifice was for the priest. That's right. And when Jesus Christ became a high priest, we didn't have to offer those sacrifices anymore. Because what need does he have of our sacrifices? Well, he's the ultimate sacrifice. He's the name of God. He's the name of God, so he don't need our sacrifice. So, do you have any other questions or anything? Any other questions? I was over here today, too. Okay. So, the brother went over fringes with you. You understood the hair rap already. You learned the Sabbath day, right? I know. She, she knows the hair rap already. She knows she's supposed to have a hair rap. Just get right here. I got you. Okay. Now see, I'm going to show you something. Now, you said you had a business meeting, right? So, we're in the land of our captivity, so a lot of things are out of our control. But even that falls under work on the Sabbath day. But that's where repentance and mercy comes in, right? So, I just wanted to point that out because I heard you say you had a business meeting. Maybe you didn't know, or maybe you didn't know, but... As a single woman, I have to say my business. Right. Uh, the uh, Lord is providing it however it is in my time right now. It's looked at I'm at. In my time, and I have to do it too. What he takes care of me. Y'all do this right. all the time? Now, yeah, we do. We do this. We do this every every day of the week. We're, we're somewhere teaching. Now, yeah. Now, yes. Give me, uh, give me, uh, I want wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom walk it with you by crooked ways. What I'm going to show you is that when we first start learning, there's a lot of things that we're not going to do right. And there's going to be a grace period to get yourself together. But you have to be in the process of actually getting yourself together. Now, as far as uh, the Lord providing for you, yeah, he's going to make a way. He's going to make a way for you to keep his commandments also. So you, you have to strive to keep the commandments. So, you know, after we learn certain things, if we continue their men... Surah 417. What is it? Surah 417. Surah 417. Let's get that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 17. The book of Surah chapter 4, verse 17. For at the first... She will walk with thee by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. So this is talking about wisdom when it says she. Wisdom is referred to as a woman. Ecclesiasticus. That's in the Apocrypha. That's in the Apocrypha. But yeah, it's called Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. That's in the 14 books that were removed from the King James Bible. Brother has the uh, table of contents right here. If you get a 1611 King James Bible, it has all 80 books that are in the Bible. Oh, it got 80 books? Yeah, it has 80 books. Most of us know 66, but it has 80 books in the Bible. I didn't know they had 80 books. Yeah, you can, uh, you can get that. After the Sabbath is over, when the sun goes down today, you can get that online at, on Amazon. Yeah, hey, oh yeah. yeah, Saturday is the Sabbath day. So when the sun goes down today, yeah. When the sun goes down today, when it turns into tonight, because the day starts at night, tonight's actually Sunday morning. So on Sunday morning, tonight, when the sun goes down, you can go online and purchase that book. You can buy it separately too. You don't have to buy the same one he has. You can buy it separately. What is it, Apocrypha? Apocrypha. It means hidden books. So, picture that, right? <laughs> so, what we're showing you, like these things right here, I know you're in the learning process, but that's why, that's why you ended up here today. The further. So, I'm gonna show you some Proverbs 20 and 24. 
I'm going to show you something. 20 and 24. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 24. Man's going uh, of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So you thought you were just out running errands. But the Lord put it in your spirit to come this way so you can see us. And so you can learn this. So you can further grow and understand that while you had good intentions going down here to this church, that is... Now, you had good intentions going to that church down there, but they're not teaching you right. They're not teaching our people right over there. Because whether they have this on the wall or not, Whether they have this picture on the wall or not, they still teach the doctrine that comes with this. You understand? Like, come here, come back at 2018. Bring it out. Let me show you part of the doctrine that comes with this image. Come back at 2018. Come on, bro. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. What profit the graving image that the maker thereof have graving it? The molting image. And a teacher of lies. So it says, what part with the graven image, the multi image, and the teacher of lies? You know, that the Christian cross has power in it. There's no power in that hunk of metal that's on your shoulder right there. That, that cross doesn't mean anything. That cross was an instrument of death. It was, it was capital punishment in the in the time of Rome, when Jesus Christ walked the earth. Now, that would be the equivalent of the electric chair today, or a lethal injection. So, when it says that's a teacher of lies, what comes with that cross is this image. What comes with that cross is Sunday worship, which Sunday worship actually goes into worshiping the sun. It goes all the way back to Babylon with Nimrod and Tammuz. Same thing with Christmas. That also comes with that cross and this image. Jesus is black. Jesus looks just like you. Jesus don't want you to be out here getting drunk early in the morning. All right, sis. Jesus wants you to wear your real hair, not that weave. Okay, if you know, you gotta do it. If you know, a lot of times, a lot of times our people say they know already. But guess what? The Bible says actions are ways, says. So if you know, you got to show. So, again, a teacher of lies, that green image that calls, comes white Jesus, comes Christianity, comes... God so loved the world. This lie about John 3.16. God, God didn't come for everybody. He did not come for everybody. Everybody don't need saving. Everybody didn't go through slavery. Everybody didn't lose their identity. Everybody didn't get their backs beat until they had their name changed. Everybody ain't walking around with the name of a plantation as they serve me. Bring it out. People walking around with the last names of Williams, Jackson, Greenwood. Those are the plantations that they came from. Those are the slave masters' names. Yes. That ain't your name. Right you going, name. You're going to a family. you going to a family reunion, repping the white family. At this family reunion, you represent your slave master. Because right. God said your last name is Israel. He said you are a prince with the power. Or a princess with power. That's what Israel means. Greenville don't mean nothing. Jackson don't mean nothing. White don't mean nothing. None of these mean Thibodeau, Bridgewell. None of them means mean anything. So, now I made a statement about John 3.16. I want to prove that out the Bible. Let's go to John 3.16. Let's go there. So, in the book of John, 
when Jesus Christ made the statement that God so loved the world, who was he talking to? The world that he was talking to. Who, who was Jesus Christ having a conversation with? Because this is the conversation he was having. Everybody. Let's see. John chapter 3, verse 1. The book of John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, came come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. So he's speaking with Nicodemus. So Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus. So the whole chapter of John chapter 3 is a conversation between two Jews. Because he said Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, a Pharisee, so he was a Jew. And Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. So this is two Jews having a conversation. What are they having a conversation about? Repentance. And who repentance is for. And who repentance was opened up to. So let's drop down to John 3.14. Because everybody knew John 3.16. But well, what about John 3.14? What does that say? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believing in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So what is Jesus Christ making reference to here? He says he must be lifted up even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So what is that making reference to? Let's get the history. Let's get the history. Check, check. So, go to, go to Numbers. Check, check. Go to the book of Numbers, 21. It's 21 and 6. So we can get the reference that Jesus Christ made. The book of Numbers, chapter 21 and verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and most people of Israel died. So because the people spoke against Moses and spoke against God, God sent fiery serpents among the people, and they were biting the people and said, the children of Israel are dying. And watch this. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against him. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it up upon a bow, and it shall come to pass, that everyone that is bitten, when he look, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So the serpent was in the pole. You ever seen the ambulance, how they got the serpent on the pole? That's where they get that from. But that's that's the image that Moses Yeah, that's the that's the image that Moses lifted up in the wilderness. So Jesus Christ said, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the same man be lifted up. So that means Jesus Christ had to be lifted up the same way, the same exact way. So now, now in the wilderness, there was a great multitude. There were other people there. But he said that every one of the children of Israel that was bitten by those serpents, when they looked upon the brass serpent, they were healed. So this was, they were lifted up to the, the grand serpent was lifted up to the children of Israel, not to everybody, right? Now is this the instance in uh, when Moses was trying to get them to be grateful for the manna that God sent down and those who didn't want to Yes, yes, it's the same story. So now in John 3, 14, he said, even, even as Moses lifted up the serpent to the children of Israel, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So that means Jesus Christ must be lifted up to who? Just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? No, Jesus Christ must be lifted up to the children of Israel. So we can look upon Jesus Christ. Yes, just like we out here doing now, this right here, and the way we live our life, this is lifting up Jesus Christ to the children of Israel. And I'm saying this. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because there's a misconception about this verse. Because this verse says the world, right? When we, let's, let's get there. Let me jump this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, 
again, this is two Jews talking. And the Jews had a certain slang and a certain way they spoke because they understood God in a way that we don't understand God today. But when it says the world, it ain't talking about the entire world. Give me John 18, John 18 and 20. We're going to stay in the same book. And I'm going to show you what Jesus Christ considers the world. John chapter 18 and verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I am taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always result. So he said he spake openly to the world, but he only taught in the synagogues and in the temples where the Jews were at. So who was that world that he was talking to? The Jews, right? Which are Israelites from the tribe of Judah. So Jesus Christ said he spake openly to the world of Israel. Because that's the only world that matters to the most high God. Yes. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.